Hi. Welcome to this very short introduction to stress and strain. And this is part of our uh, effort to try and teach you the basics of uh, how finite element analysis works. So we're going to focus on some basic understanding uh, with the idea that uh, we will uh, we will learn enough to be able to do a reasonable finite element an element analysis of uh, certain components. So there are two items that one thing is we are always looking at some kind of force distributions and so on. So intensity, force intensity is what matters, uh, not the absolute value of force. So in order to do this particular course, you need to have some familiarity with vector algebra and multivariable calculus, and a bit of information about strength of materials. Okay, first up, what is meant by stress? So we are going to talk a little bit about what is the purpose of talking about uh, force intensity and so on. So we really are going to look up force vector per unit area at a given location. That's what we mean by stress. Uh, the symbol is this Tij, and we will talk about the symbolic representation that is very, very important. Please remember that finite element analysis require you to specify certain stress components on surfaces where forces are applied. You cannot directly apply forces. You always have to figure out how to change that into uh, some kind of distribution. Okay, so before we start, I want you to understand something very critical, that the primary task of engineering is to convert a seemingly impossible or very tough task into a boring procedure. Okay, so we are going to look at three procedures. The first one is a procedure for describing forces that act on surfaces through force intensity vectors, also called traction or stress vectors. A procedure for describing internal forces acting inside a body, this is called stress matrix and it is related to the traction vector, and a method for describing local deformations of a body through what is called strain measures. Key point about mathematics is that all of mathematics, for math, the symbols have no It is we who have to provide the meaning. So all of engineering uses math for logic and people with experience for meaning. If you don't know what a particular emoji means, you cannot interpret the sentence or the sentiment being expressed, right? Same way, if you do not know what a particular math emoji, what a symbol means and how to interpret it, you will not be able to understand what the math is trying to tell you. Okay. So now there is a deep analogy between mechanics, electrical circuits, and thermal circuits. The key point is that force distribution should be thought of like a current. They flow through a body. And force equilibrium is the same of, as Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. Sum of all the currents at a node has to be zero. Same way, sum of all the forces at a node has to be zero. That is what is used. So force distributions are shown like vectors like we show here. And places where force distributions accumulate are, reason, are regions of likely failure. So this force distribution is very, very critical. Okay. Now, this analogy goes quite a bit deeper. I will just list the basic items. Um, so for forces, the, the electrical analogy is current and the thermal analogy is heat flux. Displacements, the electrical analogy is voltage. So voltage differences, it's across variable. You know, you talk about voltage across, like that we talk about displacement across. And same way, temperature difference, that's what voltage looks like. Uh, springs are like capacitors or heat sinks or sources. Masses are like electrical inductors. Dashpots are like electrical resistors and thermal conductors, okay? So this just gives you a quick analogy. We are not going to use this very heavily, but it is important to realize and there is an underlying reason in physics why these analogies work out so well. Okay, so to understand what we are trying to do, we have first have to realize that our way of describing external forces in free body diagrams are imprecise for the purpose of finite element analysis. What do I mean? Just showing forces is not enough for finite element analysis. You need to describe how it is distributed. So when you did your classic strength of materials and so on, you just drew force vectors like this, or maybe you said compression, tension, shear, but this is not enough. 
what you want to while it is good for rigid bodies but for deformable bodies we need to describe how the forces are distributed across a cross section for fea okay this force distribution is what we are going to talk about okay and this actually matters uh, for the purpose of thinking about how these forces cause failure so when whether we are able to cut something or break it or something depends not just upon how much force we apply but how much it is distributed i mean we know that it's pretty easy to cut butter with a knife but try and cutting it try and cut it with the blunt end of a spoon it will be much much harder right so same way a water jet cutter and some of you may be familiar with it uh, in your uh, engineering uh, you know in your engineering lab uh, has much less total force than a fire hose but it can cut through steel because its force intensity is more so what matters for deformation and failure is force intensity and this is force vector divided by per unit area of a surface this is what we need to describe the exposed surface of a body that you are going to analyze okay so this is where we are going to head our next major topic is to talk about how this is done force intensity is the vector on surface is technically called stress or traction vector so people are very casual about it and they'll just say stress but you have to understand that you have to be very careful there is a stress matrix there's a stress vector so there's a stress component you have to know what each of these things are so be very careful so i will always put force intensity vector because that's easy to understand and just to point out that force intensity vector is also called traction vector it's not traction like that like what you'd see in a bed but it's traction as in forces okay so traction vector or force intensity vector is force vector divided by unit area okay it has magnitude and direction just like force but its unit is newton per millimeter square or mega pascal i know that many of you are comfortable with using uh, newton per meter square and try to convert everything to newton per meter square this is a very bad idea uh, in engineering and all your solid works and all fea try it because all your lengths will be in millimeters and your forces should be in newton per millimeter square so the unit in the engineering unit is mega pascal or ksi that is kilo pound per square inch so those are the typical units and the conversion between them so if you look at a stress strain graph it will always be given in ksi strain strain in inch per inch and then stress in ksi so i want you to understand that one ksi is approximately 7 mpa now memorize that into your brain because it's a easy conversion it's close it's not exact but it's close enough for you to get an idea and most of the forces most of the force intensities are in the range of about uh, 30 to 60 ksi it's about 200 to 400 mega pascals so you can see that uh, there are two graphs here one for steel one for aluminum you can see that roughly ranges in the in the range of about 20 to about 60 mega pascals is where everything uh, ksi is where everything is uh, happens okay so please remember that this is the idea so force intensity is what we need to completely understand thank you very much